So the US midterm elections are just around the corner. And with this in mind, we have provided this short briefing which tries to situate the quality of US elections in international perspective. Actually, how good are US elections compared to the rest of the world? Do they get unfair media coverage? Or maybe there actually are some serious issues that are underlying the democratic process uh, within the United States. The US is often self-proclaimed as a beacon for democracy and has played historically a really, really important role around the world in promoting free and fair elections, but has also had these historic issues itself. There is therefore a large volume of academic literature which considers some of these problems that exist in US elections. So this has often looked at one part of the electoral process. So is there voter fraud at polling stations on election day? To what extent is there voter suppression? How does, does gerrymandering still take place? What problems exist in election administration, given what we saw at that infamous 2000 presidential election between Bush versus Gore? Are there how does this fit within the broader context of democratic backsliding? And well, to what extent are, are there actually characteristics in the United States political system which are indicative of some potential civil war? Things we thought were unthinkable. If we want to evaluate the quality of US elections though, we need to have some clear concepts in front of us. And scholars have developed different ways in which it is possible to judge the quality of elections. Now, we prefer the latter on this slide, democratic theory. We have elections for a reason, that is that we want democracy and democratic principles to be upheld. Hence, we develop electoral integrity principles that we also want to be upheld if we want an election to be said to be supporting democracy. How do we then measure the quality of elections? How do we know whether these principles have been upheld? Well, the Electoral Integrity Project runs the Perception of Electoral Integrity Index. This is an expert survey where we are asking experts about the quality of elections around the world in each specific country. And the data is freely available for people to download via our website. The data set in total covers over four and a half thousand expert assessments from 480 elections around the world. And cumulatively, the study covers elections from 2012 up to the end of 2021. The survey covers all aspects of the electoral cycle. So not just looking at electoral districting, not just looking at voter registration, all of the aspects and preparations that were involved in running an election. And the global picture, the trends are all available to download in the Global Electoral Integrity Report from our website. You can see from this a global ranking about the quality of elections around the world. Here we have an index score on a range of 0 to 100. So we can see, for example, that elections in Ethiopia are rated at 34, that elections in India rated at 57, and the elections in the United States rate, rated at 61. The global trend, as you might expect, is that the higher the level of GDP, the better the quality of elections. And there's deep sociological arguments for why that may or may not be the case. But generally speaking, therefore, you'd expect elections in the US to be especially high, given that GDP levels are comparatively high. Another factor that affects the quality of elections, as you might expect, is the overall quality of democracy. The greater the overall quality of democracy, the other aspects of democracy that doesn't include elections, the greater the quality of elections. So again, given that US levels of liberal democracy has tended to be high, you'd expect elections to have a high quality within the United States. 
globally, you, we also provide information on the aspects of the electoral cycle that are strong and those that are comparatively weak. So globally, you can see that the vote counting, the, pr the procedures tend to be stronger aspects of elections, but media and finance are the areas internationally that are weaker. And because we've been running the survey now for 10 years, you can see some of the changes that are occurring internationally. Actually, there is quite a lot of continuity over this 10 year period. You have seen an increase in terms of the voter registration around the world. And you've seen a decline uh, in terms of vote counting processes, but th this is on a 100 point scale and therefore the changes are comparatively small. But you do see big changes within countries. This figure here illustrates how some countries have seen a major increase in terms of the quality of elections over this period, and some countries in red have seen a decline. So where does the US fit in this story? Well, it tends to be pretty middle ranking. In terms of its position within the Americas, for example, it is in 16th place below Trinidad and Tobago, joint there with Colombia uh, and Grenada. What about in terms of stages of the electoral cycle? Well, there are some aspects in the US where the US is doing better than the global norm. So in terms of procedures, in terms of party registration, media, vote process, vote count, electoral management, you can see here that the US is higher than the global average. But then there are areas where the US is behind, in some cases, substantially so. So finance, it tends to the US is behind. It's also the case in terms of laws and boundaries and voter registration. Boundaries, as you can see from this figure, is the area where the US has the lowest score on a 100 point index. Gerrymandering is a real problem, it seems, within the United States. Those aspects of the electoral cycle are actually indexes which we can break apart and look to see in a little bit more detail what's going on. So if we look at laws, for example, this is one area where the US is comparatively doing poorly. We can look at some of the sub questions that are involved here. The figures here compare the US to its neighbour, Canada, but also the global mean. And you can see, for example, in terms of the first question, election laws restricted citizens' rights. Uh, this is an area where the US is performing comparatively poorly compared to uh, Canada, but also internationally. We can look at boundaries. Again, the US is in blue here, and you can see this question of the boundaries were impartial. This is not the case in the US, it seems, especially compared to Canada. Boundaries favoured incumbents. This is more of a problem. And boundaries discriminated against some parties. Again, the US are performing particularly poorly on this, on this topic. And then in terms of voter registration, uh, the US tending to do poorly on the bottom scale here. Uh, some citizens were not listed in the register. And in terms of campaign finance, Again, you can see the US trailing behind Canada in many areas, although a little bit closer towards the global mean. Now, given we've had these concerns about global black backsliding and backsliding in the United States, um, is there actually evidence that US elections have been going backwards? Well, not a lot. Actually, if you look at the scores here for the quality of US elections since 2012, Things have been fairly steady and fairly consistent. It's always been the case that boundaries have been a problem, for example. It has always been a case that finance have been a problem. But at the same time, there is some evidence of a decline, particularly with respect to results, where in 2020, the results index shows a much uh, greater problem. This was the area of new weakness in the United States. And you can see how this declined over time on this figure here. Now, why was this? Well, again, you can break apart the index score for results in terms of its subcomponents. And this was basically because of the way in which our experts were responding to these questions here. 
the experts were saying that parties and candidates were increasingly challenging the results, that the election was leading to more protests, more peaceful, peaceful protests, but also more violent protests, and that disputes were not necessarily uh, resolved through legal challenges. So to bring this all together, the US is often self-proclaimed as a beacon for democracy. Um, this is especially important in the international environment right now, where there is these uh, cleavages opening up between democracies and dictatorships, as the events in Ukraine have shown. The US are not a beacon for democracy. They are a middle ranking country in terms of electoral integrity. There is some evidence of backsliding with respect to the results aspect of elections. Um, and this means that perhaps measures to increase confidence in the electoral process is especially important. People will need to be reassured uh, about the legitimacy and accuracy of the results that are announced. But there appears to be an important appearance and reality issue going on here. Actually, the results process and the mechanics behind the elections seems to be strong and other evidence uh, shows that it's improved but it's maybe the conduct of candidate party organizations and the media uh, where the problems lie in terms of casting doubt about those results there are other problems in u.s elections these include for example um, voter registration electoral boundaries and so on um, but these are not easy fixes. These are, are long and deep-rooted problems in American elections that have been there for a very long period of time. Uh, automatic voter registration is something which Holly and I have both published on recently. And you can see our, our piece in the Washington Post about why that is, is important. But ultimately, some of these reforms are going to take a lot of, a, a lot of time. Some of the slides, some of the references that I referred to are available here, but do also look on our website for many of the resources uh, and many of the books from which this presentation draws from. And especially our Global Electoral Integrity Report. Thanks for listening. <laughs>